I saw today on Google Plus that um, Laura from the YouTube channel Blueberry Patch had tagged me in a period tag video and I had never really seen one of these before so I didn't really know for sure what that was but I figured it out and so this was back in the the first uh, week of September and I'm really sorry that it took me so long to notice that I just happened to be in there today um, because I haven't really been active over on Google Plus very much and so I was in there kind of clicking around and I saw that Laura had tagged me so I figured the least I could do is come and answer these simple questions that are on this and basically it's called the what is your perfect period tag and um, you know I've never really had any frank disc what's really interesting is that I run a YouTube channel about menstruation and alternative menstrual products and I've never actually had frank discussions about the nature of my periods really <laughs> and so I figured you know what if she's brave enough to do that, I will go ahead and do it. So these are five questions, and actually she had a sixth one, so I would go ahead and answer that one too. Um, questions that you ask about, you know, if you could have your absolutely perfect period, what would that look like? And these are, these are five questions. And so I'll just jump right into those, but you know how my computer is, so I'm gonna switch over to a new clip before I answer the first question, just to be on the safe side. So the question, the first question kind of goes like this. It says, if you had the choice, would you still even have a period? If you could choose not to have one, meaning that you would no longer, um, here comes Cadence. She makes a lot of noise. Um, basically it said that if you had the choice, and of course that would mean that if you'd no longer, uh, if you chose to say that no, you would no longer have a period, then that would mean, of course, no fertility because the, the whole purpose of it is um, to facilitate reproduction uh, in the female system. So, um, so if you say no, then that would mean, you know, no more kids, but, you, or would you choose to continue having them? And I don't intend, Mr. Nix and I do not intend to, to try to have any more children, but there's just something about the finality of saying no to that, that I'm more than happy to put up with menstruation until I naturally reach uh, menopause. Um, so no, I would not, I definitely would not choose not to have them anymore. In fact, kind of as a tangent to this, oh, she, she goes under the desk to get her right at my feet and then she decides, when she was a puppy, she would get under there and she fit really well and she used to like to sit underneath my desk right at my feet and chew on her little bone. It's a little Nyla bone. Um, and she used to really enjoy sitting down there, but now that she's big, she doesn't fit under there so well, but she keeps trying and then she gets under there and gets frustrated because she can't get comfortable and then goes out and makes noise. So anyway, babbling and I can't even answer the first question. Okay, so yes, to question number one, I would still have a period. Um, and to be honest, um, when I was in Ireland, um, in, I want to say this was in 2010, I got my first Paragard uh, IUD shortly after Elizabeth was born um, because we didn't want to have children without planning for them. And um, so that was my, that was our chosen method. And um, when I was in Ireland, it came due to, to remove it and, and put in a new one. And um, in Ireland, they didn't have the Paragard, so they put in the m Marina. And the marina has slow release hormones, and, and, and for different people, react different ways to it. But with me, I didn't have any cycle at all for about a year. And at first, it was kind of cool. Software skipping, so I'll be right back. So I went for basically a solid year with. She wants to go downstairs. Oh my goodness, this dog. I love her, but mercy. Um, come on. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna take up the video, get up here so everybody can see you. She's not going to do that either. Um, but I didn't have a period for, you know, a little over a year, and that really bothered me. It bothered me a lot more than, you know, when they told me that that might happen, that I might just stop having a, a menstrual cycle altogether. That sounded really cool, because back then that was before I had switched to cloth, and, and I had terrible ones, and, you know, the skin problems that I had talked about, and all of the things that led me to change to cloth. I did not have positive attitude or experiences with menstruation prior to switching to cloth products and, um, and cups. Um, but even then, it really bothered me that I didn't have a cycle. It just really felt unnatural to me. It didn't feel like something that was right. So even though, you know, I don't think, 
I don't want to dare to speak for all menstruating people, but I think most of us, I don't think, I don't think we hate it quite enough that we would be comfortable if it just disappeared entirely. And then of course there's also the reproductive question. Even though I don't plan to have any more children, um, my daughter is probably the one and only, there's just something about the finality of saying, no, I'm gonna give up any possibility of that just because I don't want to deal with my monthly cycle. So the answer to that one is yes, I would still choose to, to, to menstruate. Question number two is on your perfect period, what method would you use to handle your flow, assuming that whatever you picked would never leak? So that, you know, assuming that whatever product you would ideally like to use um, for your for handling your perfect cycle, um, that it would work properly and that you wouldn't have leaks and that you wouldn't have problems with it. So if you had the perfect, it would be cloth pads. If I could, um, I have really, really heavy days and I find it inconvenient uh, to change frequently enough on those days to, to just use pads. But if we were going on the assumption that this was an ideal world, I would wear nothing but pads because cloth, now before I switched to cloth, that would have been the opposite. I would have used nothing but internal protection without having to wear pads because they irritated my skin and they crinkled and they were sweaty and not breathable because of that plastic thing that they put on the back of the disposables that sticks to the underwear. So in my perfect ideal period universe, I would use, um, uh, I would have used nothing but tampons back then. But now that I've been introduced to the world of reusables cloth pads, I find them so comfortable. I forget that I'm wearing them. Um, it's just a completely different experience, in addition to which they absorb a lot more and keep it away from your skin a lot better, uh, just in my experience. So I would wear nothing but cloth pads um, if I had, and of course they would, all be really, really pretty ones from Annie Bell's and Hidden Glen and Novel Red and Your Craft and the favorite ones that I've made because those are all my favorite pet makers. Okay, question three. Mr. Dix just got home. So question three is going to have to wait a minute. So Mr. Nix came home, like I just said, and he's, you can't see him. He's sitting right there. So I have to finish the rest of this tag video where I'm talking about periods in front of my husband, just so you understand the new difficulty level present in the rest of this video. Okay, so question number three is, on your perfect period, would you get rid of all the symptoms that you have? And Laura talked about PMS, and I'm glad she did, because that's the one I would get rid of. All the rest of them are not that bad. I don't get terrible menstrual cramps. I mean, it's just, you know, without at least a little bit, you know, it wouldn't work. I mean, because it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually shocked. There's a lot of women who don't know this. Menstrual cramps are just the uterine contractions to push the lining and everything out. So that's why when people describe childbirth for the first time to women who are giving birth for the first time, they're like, oh, it'll be like the worst menstrual cramp you ever had. And that's, it's because it's the same thing happening essentially is that those muscles are contracting to push stuff out of the uterus, you know. And instead of a baby, uh, when we menstruate, it's just the uterine lining and the fluids and stuff. So anyway, the question was, if I could get rid of all of the menstrual symptoms, would I do it? No. The only one I would get rid of is PMS. Because this is, and this is another thing that I did not notice or learn about me until I started, uh, cloth and reusables and I started tracking my cycle with apps on my phone. Because I always had really, really irregular periods. They, they just, I would skip some or I'd have two really close together and it was like that my whole life. And then after I switched, it seemed to me like they were coming more regularly. So I started tracking just to see if that was my imagination or if it was real. And they, they really have kind of regulated. I run between a 30 to 33 day cycle now. And it, so, I mean, they're pretty compact and close together now, whereas prior to changing to cloth, they were not. And that's been going on for a solid year now, so I, I think it's safe to say that there was something about the disposable use or, I don't know, something about my body chemistry changed after I switched. So now I'm regular, whereas I never was before. But the secondary benefit of switching to an app and tracking it was that I discovered that I, I mean, I've always thought that I was 
just this incredibly moody person. I would get, have these spells where I would just get really kind of down and I have a lot I'm, I'm an anxious nervous worry wart kind of person aren't I miss Mr. Nix? A little bit. A little bit. He's being very kind. I'm an extraordinarily anxious person. I worry about things that normal people don't worry about and you know and that would get really bad. I would have these you know it would seem like I would have these periods of time where it would just be really, really bad for a while, and then I would go back to being a relatively normal person who worried about normal person things. Maybe more than normal people would worry about them, but I would worry about rational stuff to worry about. Well, when I started tracking it on, that's the pizza guy, so Mr. Nix is going to go get the pizza, so you're going to hear all of that taking place down there. But anyway, so I started to realize that all of those really terrible anxiety and kind of depressive cycles where I was just down about things and worried about stuff that just shouldn't be worried about, that was all in the week before m my actual period would begin. So I, I always thought I didn't have PMS because everybody says, oh, PMS is when you get irritable and angry and you snap at people and you just become kind of, you know, witchy. And that didn't happen to me. I did not have that particular manifestation of premenstrual syndrome. But my PMS is I do, I tend to get very, very anxious and I tend to get a little on the depressive side um, in, a, in the week before my period starts. So if I could get rid of that, I would absolutely get rid of that. Um, but that's the only menstrual symptom. I have been very, very fortunate in my life. I've never had debilitating menstrual cramps. I do have discomfort and everything, but I don't have debilitating ones. So yeah, really the only one I'd get rid of is the, the pms -y stuff. Question number four is, on your perfect period, would you change your work or daily routine during the cycle? Yeah. <laughs> if I had my druthers, when I was on my period, because I tend to get a little bit tired. I think that's pretty typical for a lot of people. You just get more tired than usual. Not necessarily sleepy, you just kind of drag a little bit. Um, at least I do. And I've heard other people say that they do too. Um, so if I could change that, yeah, I wouldn't have to get up in the morning and, and, and drive my daughter to school, and I wouldn't have to cook, you know, that sort of thing. But my family's pretty lenient with me. If I don't feel like cooking, we order pizza like we just did. Um, but yeah, I think if I could, on my absolute perfect period, I would just lay around all day and do a whole lot of nothing and maybe ride my bicycle a little bit because that does relieve my, my, my menstrual cramping is so mild that usually if I get up and walk around or ride my bicycle a little bit, they go away. So I would probably ride my bike leisurely, you know, a little bit and I would sit around and watch sniffly romantic movies and eat a lot of vegetables and ranch dip and that kind of thing. So yeah, I would definitely change my schedule. I would just clear all of my responsibilities and just hang out. Question number five is on your perfect period, what would your attitude about it be? You know, what would your attitude towards the whole thing be? Well, honestly, it's really going to be kind of what my attitude towards it is now. Um, once I got rid of disposables, and this is not it, it really is, I wouldn't have made a channel about this stuff and talked to whoever wanted to pass through and listen to me, you know, people I went to kindergarten with have access to YouTube, so, you know, I would not broadcast this stuff if, it, if I didn't actually feel this way about it, because, you know, I thought it was important enough to talk to other people about it. Um, but my attitude toward periods now is I, it, I really don't care when they show up. I mean, I really have no... I, I don't ever go, oh, yay, now I have this going on, but, but I don't dread it, I don't have a problem with it, it doesn't bother me anymore, um, I don't have a waste basket full of stinky, nasty, disposable garbage that has to be taken out regularly or else it just really, because I seem to have my sense of smell during my menstruating days tends to be heightened, kind of like it was when I was pregnant, not to the degree it was when I was pregnant, but... So things that smell bad just really bother me, and, and disposables stink. I mean, disposables reek. They smell so bad. And I don't have that anymore, so that part of it's gone. Um, I don't leak with cloth pads anymore, so that part of it's gone. Um, I don't have to put towels down on my bed underneath me to make sure that I don't leak all over my pajamas and the sheets and, and the mattress and everything. And 
have the embarrassment of having to have my husband deal with all of that. I mean, he was always really good about it, but still, I mean, it doesn't matter how sweet your husband is to you. You don't want to wake your husband up at three o'clock in the morning and say, baby, you got to get out of the bed so I can get blood off the sheets. Um, I don't have to do that anymore. So that's gone. So really, honestly, my attitude wouldn't be any different than it is right now. So my, my attitude towards my period is perfect now, in my opinion. It's just, oh, it's here. Okay. Pull out the pad bucket. And that's really all I have to do. And the last question uh, was one that Laura talked about. She said, um, would you, if you, if you had the option, you know, whatever your collective flow over the entire cycle is, you know, what the entire period it's like, you know, I read this one thing that said two to three tablespoons. And then I read another thing that said four to eight tablespoons. And then I read another thing that said up to 12 tablespoons. So honestly, I'm starting to think that kind of like doctors don't know that disposables cause problems. I'm starting to think doctors don't really have any idea what the volume of the average menstrual flow is either. I think they just kind of spitball and throw out ballpark figures or whatever. So let's just assume that it's a couple ounces. Okay, let's, let's just round it up to whatever number you want to put in your head. Can, and, and the option is, would you spread that out over a certain number of days or would you just have it all happen in one day and be done with it? No, I would not have it all happen in one day. Good gracious me. Can you imagine having, because if you stop and really think about it, because that sounds convenient at first, it's like, oh yeah, we just have it all happen in one day. No, no, no. Think about what a nightmare that would be having, because you know what it's like when you go from day to day to day. Some of us have cycles that last up to 10, uh, periods that last up to 10 days long, right? Mine is usually four or five days. And, you know, I have a couple of days in there where it's pretty high maintenance, where you have to go in on your heavier days and you have to deal with it pretty frequently, even if you're wearing a cup. So imagine having five times that all compressed into one day. No, thank you. I would keep it exactly the way it is now and spread it out over a few days. It's just really not that big of an inconvenience. And after you, you know, you've had two or three of them, you know, your first several are a little daunting. At least they were in my memory. The first several periods that you go through as a, as an adolescent are a little daunting because you're not used to it yet. And you hadn't figured out, you know, where you need extra padding or whatever, um, or how frequently you need to check it or, or whatever. Um, but you know, once you're kind of used to it, I just it's not that big a deal. Uh, so I would keep the length of it exactly where it is, um, or maybe even spread it out longer and have less per day. I think it would be really great to have a light one where I could just throw on a pad, and if I didn't remember to change it every four hours on, you know, my heaviest day would be like, oh, maybe I should change once at lunch, and that would be enough, you know. So if I had to, if I had the option of lengthening it, my perfect period would be like six or seven days instead of four or five, just because if I could spread it out and make it a little bit lighter, I think I would enjoy that. Um, and then the final thing she talked about in there, she said she made a comment that I thought was kind of nice. She was talking about how she thinks that, you know, men who cohabit with women or men who have serious relationships with women, you know, men who are married to women, especially, and this is the big one, men who have been married to a woman for a while, lived in a home with a woman for a while, and especially the ones who have reproduced with a woman, you know, so they've gone through all this. You live in the house with a female human being. You, you need to understand the, the basic biology. You need to have a little bit more, you know, I think it's kind of hard to ask men to empathize you know, I don't think they can really put themselves in our shoes because, you know, the equipment is different and, and the concept to them just doesn't make any sense. And that's fine. But, you know, for have it, Google it. Get an anatomical chart because some of the stuff that I've seen people say that their husbands say about menstruating and, and some of the things I've heard men say. Now, if they make jokes, see, I'm not really easy to offend with the jokes, you know, when men make jokes about you know, the infamous one, never trust anything that bleeds for seven days and doesn't die. You, we, we've all heard that joke, right? And some people get righteously enraged by that joke. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it's insulting, but it's kind of, I'm sorry, it's kind of funny. That's, that's just me. Uh, unless, of course, obviously they're being mean about it, but most men who actually say that in the presence of women aren't being mean about it. They're, they're being, they're being men and that's fine. But I agree with Laura 100%. I wish that, that men who 
have chosen to spend their lives with a woman would take a little time to understand that number one, it's not like disease ridden. Number two, no, she's not going to pass out from blood loss. It's not the same as having a cut that bleeds for seven days. It would be nice if they could point to the uterus on an anatomical chart. That would be nice. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a good point that she brought up. So anyway, that was it. That was my first tag video. So <laughs> thank you for tagging me. I thought that was so cute. And so, and by the way, Laura from Blueberry Patch, you're just adorable. I, I had not seen any of your videos before and I'm glad I ran across you. So anyway, thanks. Talk to y'all later. Bye.